Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Ethan Van Scover. Welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. Uh, and welcome to, uh, I hope you all have your feety pajamas on. Uh, I hope you're all ready to get tucked in and go nighty night. Does anybody want some warm milk? Would anybody like something like that before we go, uh, we go to sleep? I think that would be, uh, now's the time to say. Now's the time to say. Um, good evening. All right, so um, I think now is a good time when everybody's a little bit stressed. Everybody has uh, some hurt feelings and some owies. Many people do. We don't have hurt feelings or owies here at Comicsgate. Uh, we're feeling pretty damn uh, chipper. Very excited about the future. Very excited about the potential. And, uh, you know, a lot of Comicsgaters are uh, kind of giddy. And this is this is a great time to to do fun stuff, uh, to be inventive, to create. Uh, and so while other people are mourning the past, uh, we at Comicsgate are celebrating the future. I hope that you join me in that. Uh, this is my first Comicsgate comic book. Uh, it's called Cyberfrog Blood Honey. And tonight we're going to read it. Uh, and we are also, if I have it here, I'm just buried under lots of artwork tonight. Uh, we're also going to read the follow-up, Cyberfrog 1998, The Diary of Heather Swain. We're going to have a nice story time tonight. Um, and uh, those of you who haven't purchased this yet, haven't read it, uh, you're going to get the story for free right now. Uh, if you uh, decide that you want to buy the comic book, it is available on our eBay store, and you'll be able to get a copy there. Uh, so uh, without further ado, Cyberfrog Blood Honey by me, Ethan Van Skyver. The great Kyle Ritter, uh, probably the best colorist uh, in the world right now. Super uh, gentleman. He is a gentleman. Uh, and Somni, uh, one of the best letterers uh, I've ever seen, who was able to take the lettering font from Cyberfrog of the 90s and add a new spin to it. Uh, he also was able to create a new um, font for Salamandroid and a new font for Cyberfrog and Salamandroid's mommy, whose name is Chelsin. Uh, this is a chromium cover, of course. Uh, this is the most desirable. Actually, I think this is the second most desirable uh, variant for Cyberfrog because it's so damn shiny. Uh, and inside, we have the sketch. You can see I didn't sign it here like I normally do. It's a pristine copy. Cyberfrog Blood Honey, uh, created, written, and illustrated by Ethan Van Skyver. Colored by Kyle Ritter, lettered by Somni. This book is dedicated to Andrea, that's my wife, Hunter, who's my firstborn son, Kaylee, uh, my stepdaughter, and Ava, uh, my daughter with Andrea, four years old. Uh, and to each and every fan who helped Cyberfrog wake up again, and that's you. If you backed this comic book, you made something that seemed impossible to me possible. Uh, you guys brought back Cyberfrog, who is my favorite of my own creations. Uh, from the 1990s, uh, the very first uh, comic book character I invented. Uh, many more were to follow, but I, you know, I was talking to Dan Fraga about this, and I said to him, you know, um, there is you will not create anything as wonderful uh, as the characters that you create when you are a, a young man or young lady, uh, and you're interested in comic books uh, and you're enthusiastic about comic books, and you still live in that world, and you're not jaded yet. Uh, all of the stuff that you create when you are young, that's that's where the magic is. Uh, so here we go, part one. Part one, I like this beautiful font here by Somni. Thank you for that. Uh, this is Chelson's uh, voice. This is recorded for posterity. This is for whatever poor soul survives, suffers, and seeks answers as to why this happened. Boy, is this timely. Why this didn't work. What could have been done differently? And this is for who is to blame. I am called Chel Sin. I was your last hope. And this is the story of my failure. Okay. This is Chel Sin right here. See? Almost like a, almost like a sperm penetrating an egg. Kind of, you know. That would make this the penis. All right. If you ever leave your planet and are able to journey to mine, you will be filled with such wonder. My species is unique among the stars. I'm both machine and living thing. I am female. OK. 
Okay, so she's female. That's her, you know, there's 72 different genders. Uh, she's that one. Uh, but with a cybernetic womb that can nurture, teach, and cradle another's unborn offspring. Another's unborn offspring, not her own. She's actually kind of a foster parent. Uh, do you understand? Can you understand? Your kind was never meant to know any of this. You could not have been prepared. But I have come to know humans as most curious. I will continue to select my words with care, to educate, to empathize. Your planet was in terrible danger, as you now know. The Vespas were coming. I was called, and I was sent, and I came as quickly as I could. Pirdani cared so much about you and your planet, what you'd built, what you were, what you could be. They tried to intervene on your behalf. And here we have Chelson entering Earth's atmosphere. The Pine Barrens in New Jersey. This is actually around where I live. Uh, 1996. Uh, this is when uh, this event happened. But time was short. Okay, so we get our first good look at Chelson here. And you can see, I mean, she already kind of looks amphibian like, but she's a living robot. So many variables unaccounted for. My unborn passenger was descending, ready for delivery. But this place was desolate, uninhabited by human life. Only simple creatures chirped and slithered about. No signs of the tribe of uniformed, idealistic young male adventurers that our planners had expected me to find. Where were these Boy Scouts? Instead, just a frog. Time expired, and in that moment, our two worlds were conjoined. My passenger was born. So many variables unaccounted for. I, I delivered unto your world twins. Twins here, seeking input, seeking form. So this is what the fetal masses uh, of the Perdani citizenry actually look like. They don't take shape uh, until they meet up with uh, the two parents, and then they combine the features, as you can see here, uh, into, um, you know, the, the form that that child will take. Seeking the genetic code that would have been absorbed at that moment from two parents. Instead of a brave young human to combine with my powerful armored structure. So they were looking for a Boy Scout. That would have been a nice, strong young man to combine with these robotic cybernetics. And it would have made a, a powerful uh, cyber, cyber man. Uh, instead, it found a frog. Uh, this uh, developing fetal uh, Phoebe energy mass was amalgamating me, everything of which I was capable, all of my considerable power and strength. Look at Cyberfrog being born here, being created. Combining them with a frog. Uh, it was not the outcome that was hoped for. Uh, you are Trick Ron. This is... Uh, Chelsea speaking, you are Trick Ron, ambassador of the Phoebe, the people of Perdani. We appoint you protector of Earth. Cyberfrog. Cyberfrog just makes frog noises right now. His language hasn't been synced. And the other twin, meanwhile, unobserved, uh, has drifted off to find this lovely blue salamander with the yellow spots. And the salamander says, uh, key, key, could you please language synced? What? Compensating for local dialect. Cyberfrog's like, yo, where am I at? Synced. What the trick, Ron? I require your strict attention. Listen up, you. Cyberfrog's like, okay, I'm listening. I am your mother. Yeah? You must obey me. Uh, you are here for a very important purpose. A fight is coming. An indestructible, indes I mean, I'm sorry, an indescribable war. Death, destruction. Without you, this world is doomed. Doomed? I will always guide you. I will always prepare you. Whoa, cybernetics online. Suddenly you see these little red circles appear around Cyberfrog's arms and legs. That means Cyberfrog's cybernetic connection, almost like an internet connection, uh, has been turned on and he is now connected to Shell Sin. She says, I will always be with you. Your new home is dangerous, 
and will soon become a battleground for the survival of the human race. As long as we are connected, I will adjust and enhance, enhance your cybernetic body to meet any threat. Within you is everything that you will need to end the coming war. She doesn't explain any further than that. Uh, Cyberfrog just blasts uh, these uh, these cannons that he's created on his arms, destroys some trees, uh, and destroy the invaders. Cyberfrog's like, dig it to destroy the Vespas. Vespas? What, what are the Vespas? They're an invading, conquering swarm. You are here to protect the human race from them. Humanity may be flawed, but they have limitless potential for good. You may even grow to love them. The Vespas will see them as livestock, a food source. Their drained and empty bodies will be recycled as nesting material. Blood is the nectar that becomes their honey. The Vespas will obliterate all life and destroy all of creation. They will perch upon the ashes of billions of broken hearts and dead dreams. They will revel in the misery while they lay more eggs. They sound like dicks. That's what cyberfolk say. They sound like real jerks. Uh, yes. Uh, tell me more about humans. What do they want? Well, that's a complicated question. Most people want to live, uh, want the freedom to live as they choose, without fear. Protect them. Help them. Be prepared to die for them. Okay, when do we start? And there goes Cyberfrog. Soon, very soon. There is one more. Tick, tick, tick. Ah, the twin. Come closer, young one. Don't be afraid. Language synced. Tick, tick, hello. Actually, what would Salamandroid sound like? Hello. Hello. <laughs> you are my mother? Your name is Deduron Ron. Your size is not accidental. You were made with purpose by the planners of the world of your origin. You are appointed as the protector of your brother, Trick Ron. Watch over him, for his mission here on Earth is vital. If he fails, there will be no tomorrow. We will not share a cyberlink. I cannot offer you the advantages enjoyed by your sibling. You must endure and thrive without them. You will encounter the human population on this planet. Their value as individuals will be left for you to determine as you serve your primary function. Protect your brother, clear his path, help him to succeed even at the cost of your own life. Is this understood? You, you, you are my mother? Yes. I love you. To do Ron Ron, there is my heart and there is you. I know of no difference between them. Do well. Be worthy of your purpose. And always know that I love you too. I will. Uh, so many variables unaccounted for. And yet I allowed myself to feel hopeful. Beneath the surface of this murky water, I would monitor them and prepare. From the depths of that swamp, I watched Trick Ron change. He entered into his service with such optimism, but I had failed to properly, uh, I failed to prepare him properly. I had taught him to feel sympathy and compassion for the human race, without warning him that they'd have little to none for him in return. No matter what he did, no matter how many lives he saved, humans would treat him with scorn, fear, and hatred. He was not like them. He did not look like one of their Boy Scouts. He did not look like the hero that our planners had hoped for. Over time. Their ungratefulness and their harsh words wore him down. I had given armor to his body, but not to his heart. Trickron remained committed to his purpose, but he knew that he would never love any of these people until one dark night when he met Heather Swain. Oh, Heather, 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 Heather. Is this short shortcut through a cemetery or into one? Heather Swain was a brave young woman whose strength had been tested by the circumstances of her family, difficult family life. Her father died in combat, and her mother brought a violent, physically abusive man into their home. I could feel a darkness growing in her mind as she struggled for safety, for someone to trust, for a way to survive, but despair was closing in. Get away from me, Ben, you creep. 
Eventually, you'll give in. No, I won't. And she kicks him right in the balls, right in the agates. Just boom. It was a fight she couldn't win on her own, not without rescue, not without a hero. Cyberfrog says, I've got you. And Trick Ron was there to save her, and she him. I've got you. Hold on to me tight. I won't let you go. Heather says, I I've given up. Don't ever do that, ever. As long as I breathe, I'll look out for you. Promise? Promise. And then later, they all think I'm a monster. You aren't a monster, you're Cyberfrog. Visiting him regularly in the abandoned Camden, New Jersey row home he lived in. Don't let others decide who you are. Don't. You're a hero. You know that. You decide who you are and be that every day. And here comes a bus. Uh, this bus driver says, You sure, miss? Uh, this ain't a safe part of town. Heather says, I'm not scared of nothing. A anything. Froggy. Yo. Froggy brought you something good. You hungry? I could eat. This is fried chicken from Chicken Shack. I got a job there. Uh, if you like it, I can bring you more most days. Oh. Oh, yeah. Here's another thing. Uh, it's still bleeding. I just got it. Cyberfuck says, hmm, what's that? Well, it's uh, it's supposed to be you. I drew it for the tattoo guy. Does it look okay? Why am I grinning like that? Trick Ron found a, f a true friend in Heather Swain, and one true friend is all either of them ever needed. It seems so fortunate that they found another. Your name's really to do Ron Ron? Yes, it is. Why? Haha, <laughs> I'll call you Salamandroid. Sal for short. Salamandroid and Cyberfrog. Sal and Froggy. This dude's going to eat a lot of fried chicken. All of that is gone now. Boy, is this prescient. All of that is gone now. Friendships didn't matter. Lives didn't matter. The work of a thousand lifetimes didn't matter. It was erased. Everything was erased. Whoever finds and hears this message, my name was Chel Sin of Perdani. I failed you, and now I die. All hope is lost. Humanity, no one is coming to save you. You must save yourselves. Part two. Part two. Great lettering here. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah. Hmm. This is Bill Clinton. Betty, how do I look? How's my hair? God, this is a disaster. This is How do you do Bill Clinton's voice? God, this is a disaster. This is a goat rodeo. Do I look okay? You look fine, Mr. President. Water. I need water. All right, all right. Uh, that's what this is about, you know, Betty. They want my blood, and they're going to get it. I'm going to have to bleed on live TV for this son of a bitch. Mr. President, we're going live in three. Bloodsuckers, all of them. Two. One. We're live. Good evening. Look at the Vespas are just arriving here on Earth. Uh, these are the Vespas Hive shuttles. And they arrived on this day, on this uh, important day in American history. Uh, this frog, enic, enic, splash. The Pine Barrens in New Jersey. They ain't coming. Yeah, they are. They said, they said to meet them here. They'll be here. Nah. Why are you saying nah? Because your friends ain't good for nothing. Useless. They're pineys. They ain't coming. Nah, they're coming. And that's a lot of smack talk coming from a shader. Ha, <laughs> whatever. Maple Shade is a nice town. It's a hellhole. My buddies are coming. Your mom's a hellhole. Your mom's a hellhole. That's a, that's a great New Jersey comeback. Trick Ron. Remain online. Remain alert. High alert. The whole interconnected world, all non-human life on this planet is panicking. I cannot describe the terror. It's chemical. It's electrical. It's poisonous. It's as if the skin of this world is crawling. Something terrible is about to happen. What, worse than Traumadeus? I just dealt with that weirdo. Cyberfrog. I'm online, but I'm taking a break. I gotta rinse that horrible music out of my tympanic membrane. Plus, I think Heather uh, brought me dinner. This is Camden, New Jersey. It's August 17th, 1998. And this is the day that the world ended. 
uh, was asked questions about my relationship with Monica Lewinsky. While my answers were legally accurate, I did not volunteer information. Cyberfuck's like, chicken. Chicken? Shh, Froggy, this is important. Heather drinking an enormous big gulp. Uh, indeed, I did have a relationship with Miss Lewinsky that was not appropriate. In fact, it was wrong. It is wrong. It's all kinds of wrong. The Chelsea gave us that sin pa uh, power battery, literally a piece of her heart, and you use it to watch CNN all day. Now, for the love of all that's holy, is there any fried chicken in this joint? It's over there. Oh, come to Papa. I know that my public comments and my silence about this matter gave a false impression. I misled people, even my own wife. Uh, so what I miss? Nothing. Work, work, work. Sal's here. I deeply regret that. Says he needs you. Says it's important. Nom, 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 nom. Gorge quieter. I can only tell you that I was motivated by many factors. Munch, munch. Hey, did Sal stop by? Oh, my God. You never listen. And here's Salamandroid. He's been sitting here the whole time with his head poked through the wall, and Cyberfrog didn't even notice him. First, by a desire to protect myself from the embarrassment of my own conduct. Hi. Gah! We gotta go, Trick. Rumblebee and his clone goons, Pollinate, they got a bomb. They're driving it over to Scorpion, uh, over in Philly. Well, that's almost interesting, Sal. But you just put a huge hole in my wall. Bugs are gonna get in. My bad. You're, you're leaving me? I thought you'd hop me home. I won't be gone long. Here, Chell, Tracker, this is a tracking micro bead. Ow! If I'm late, start walking. I'll find you. And then here we go. We're on our way. Uh, sorry about your... No, Solomon Android's voice is more like, Sorry about your wall. You still mad? Nope, moved on. It's not healthy to stay mad at you. Why? Because of that thing that happens when you get mad back. Oh, that's them down there. Are those psychos throwing grenades? And you can see little... Poof, 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 poof. These guys are just a-holes. Same moment in the Pine Barrens in New Jersey. Oh my god. Oh my God, what, what is this? What? And then you see the, the uh, hubs are floating everywhere, shooting down anchor tentacles. And here come, here's our first look at the Vespas here as they emerge from the, uh, from the ships, from the crafts. No, this is aliens. This is aliens. They don't look like anything. I... And then you look behind you, you've got a gigantic Vespas. Hold up. You get, an, you, get a, um, you get a stinger right through you. The stinger isn't enough to kill you, but it's enough to paralyze you. Uh, and that's when they come down and rip, they rip your face off. Uh, they start uh, dissolving your skin, uh, dissolving your flesh uh, with their salivic acid. And they roll you up into a paste and they, and they put you right against whatever, whatever surface. No matter where they are, they start building. They start building hives. And she's like, no, and drops her cigarette. What do you say when you see something like this? I think you just make noises. Uh, drops her cigarette, and it lights on the very, very dry leaves. This is August, and the pine barrens. Uh, so the leaves catch fire pretty quick. No, 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 please. And our Vespus is like, <coughs> <laughs> the first clue uh, that the Vespus uh, do not like smoke. They don't like smoke. Second clue, she's wearing red, and they didn't see her. This guy didn't actually see her. Uh, and then uh, Chell Sin, unfortunately. I cannot stay below and witness more human suffering. Vespa's parasite, you've made a terrible mistake coming here. Pirdani has planted the seeds of your destruction on this sphere. Whoa. I like my uh, noises for alarmed uh, young women. Now, show your swarm how to burn and die. She just blows one of the Vespas away. But, you know, uh, shouldn't have done that. I cannot fight them all. I am not equipped. I shouldn't have. I just couldn't bear. Human, do not look back. Run. And here she is running. And this is a big mistake, guys. This is a big mistake. She was wearing red. She's in smoke. She's in the forest. She'd be fine, except she's going, ha, 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 when she's running. And she's exhaling carbon dioxide into the air. And here come, here come the swarm. Here come the Vespas. Uh, they quickly find her and take her out. Uh, the Vespas will see them as livestock, a food source. 
Uh, Their drained and empty bodies will be recycled for nesting material. Blood is the nectar that becomes their honey. They literally, they liquefy uh, your insides. And you just cough up out of, you know, you cough up all this honey. You bleed honey. And uh, their larvae, uh, which are born at a very quick rate. Uh, The Vespis will obliterate all life and destroy all of creation. They will perch upon the ashes of billions of broken dreams, broken hearts and dead dreams. Uh, they will revel in the misery while they lay more eggs. Gross. So uh, there you go. Proud mama here. Um, and back to uh, Cyberfrog and Salamandroid at Gray's Fairy, Philadelphia. Uh, you can have the clones. Let me get Rumblebee. Deal. Ah, looks like Jersey Corn's still in season, boys. Can't nobody do nothing without you two slimy skunks showing up. Nobody invited you. Use two amphibious derelicts know who this delivery's for, right? Keep talking, Rumblebee. Keep running that big mouth. Boom. Throwing grenades on the bridge? You idiots could have hurt people. Yo. Hey, watch the truck. It's important. He's got this. Get out of here with that garbage. I'll eat the face off his skull. Get him. I want this loser. Here come the, uh, here come the Pollen 8. They're clones of Rumblebee. Uh... What's the bomb for? Uh, hey, ow, ow, come on. And they're shooting him with their little stinger guns. Uh, Salamandroid can no longer stand by. Paul and eight. And he grabs a Toyota Celica. Now you're Paul and seven. You B-boys aren't even real. You're just robots. Maybe that's why you don't care about playing with bombs. You don't have any feelings. Now you're Paul and six. Does this hurt? You can't feel nothing. <laughs> you're trying to hurt my brother. Pollen 5. And people with guns, grenades, and a bomb. You deserve to die so you can't hurt anyone anymore. Pollen 4. Pollen 3. And then it's time to end to stop the uh, pursuit of personal destruction back in Washington, D.C. And prying into the private lives uh, and get on uh, with our national life. Our country has been distracted by this matter for too long. And I take responsibility for my part in all this. That is all I can do. Evergreen secured, energy secured, securing Eagle now. Cut the live feed. Mr. President, we need to get you to safety. Come with us, sir. And here's Philadelphia. We're under attack. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Trick. What is this? Says Salamandroid. Rumblebee, is this you guys doing this? Is this you? What are you, stupid? The noise, the buzzing. Is this it? Chell, is this it? Is this the Vesbis? Chelsin, answer. Human, do not look back. Run. He's just hearing feedback from Chelsin talking to that girl in red. Chelsin, what? What? That's Mr. Scorpion's property. Don't. I don't want your bomb, Rumblebee. We got bigger problems. Chel, this is it. Adapt me. Rapid evolve. You said I was armed for this. Screw this. Keep it. I'm out of here. There goes Rumblebee. Let's go. Cybernetics offline. Oh, ho, ho, no. Sal, Chelsin is down. Salamandroid. The sky's on fire. What's going on? I can't even hear myself think. What's happening, Trick? Stay frosty, Sal. Right here, right now. This is our entire reason for existing. This is why we're here, bro. Even without Chelsin, we need to stand and fight this. The noise, they're getting closer. So many worthy of my purpose. And then, boom, he's overwhelmed by Vespas. Overwhelmed by the Vespas. Sal, I can't see him. They swarmed. They, they took him out first. They're smart. They must have found Chelsin and took her out the same way. Take away my weapons, my resources. Isolate me. Remove all resistance. Every, oh, Heather. She's all by herself, alone. How many, of, how many of you can there be? How can there be this many of you? Back up off of me. Give me some space. And then he sees that there's another truck that's out of control barreling down the road at him. Oh, no. And the, the guy driving the truck is panicking. Cyberfrog is standing on the truck that still has Scorpion's bomb on it. Hold up. Boom. Collision and the bomb goes off. Big gigantic bomb. And there goes Cyberfrog. Backup power failing. System check assessment. Catastrophic damage. He's almost dead. 
restorative fuel cells activated, preservation mode engaged, hibernation mode initiated, and part two. Very sad. Very sad. Okay, here we go. This is part three. And Cyberfrog's eyes open up as the fuel cells, okay, start to disperse from him and uh, release. System status restored. Look at these catfish. I used to pull these off the uh, beach of the Delaware River. You know, they used to just, you know, wash up all dead on the rocky shore. These are the kind of fish that are in the uh, rivers in Jersey. Uh, cells disengaged. Swish. Cyberfrog just jumps up from the water. And uh, breathes air for the first time in a long time. And doesn't like what he sees. Um, the entire world uh, has been taken over by the Vespas. But this is just Philadelphia. The Philadelphia skyline is covered with desiccated human skin. And alien wasp shit. You know, and they're everywhere. Cyberfrog is takes a minute to take it in, sinks down into the into the water again, pushes up off the ground with his chest inflated, and then lets out an enormous, an enormous thunder croak in pain and despair and shock. Just rah. No, no, no. What what what's going on here? What is this place? Is this still Earth? And then you see a little Vespus. He caught his attention. How long have I been out? Where's Heather? Tracking Heather Swain. Located. The micro beat. I left a tracker on her. Is she okay? I gotta find her. Leaps off into the sky. And then here we cut to the Pine Barrens. New Jersey. I know you're tired of hearing it, but you need to listen to me. People who don't follow the rules disappear. They die. Stay focused and listen to your mother. Rule number one is stay in the woods. They can't fly very well with everything so close together. Rule number two is stay in the smoke and keep the fires burning. Fire hurts them. Use it. Rule number three is the hardest. Never panic. Don't run from them. They can smell your breathing when you're scared, and they like it. I know, Mom. Rule number four, always wear red. You can see she's got a little red paint here and a brush, and she's putting makeup. Uh, on Lily. Always wear red. My dad wasn't wearing red. No, he wasn't. They can't see us when we wear red. We're invisible to them. So far, yeah. It's kept us safe. When you go out, remember the rules. Hey, Lily, you want to feed the chickens with me? I can't, Megan. Where are you going? To look for him. A few steps later, um, hi. Hi, don't be scared. I don't want to hurt you. I'm looking for a friend of mine. I'm not scared of anything. I know you. I know who you are. My mom's got a tattoo of you. It looks just like you. Your mom? Mom, Cyberfrog's back. <laughs> Froggy. There we go. End part three. Uh, and that is the end of uh, Cyberfrog Blood Honey. Cyberfrog Blood Honey, everyone. Um, yeah. Appreciate you guys uh, being here for that. And we're going to move on now uh, to what I guess would be Cyberfrog, you know, 1.5 or something like that. I mean, this is kind of uh, an addendum book. Uh, in addition to uh, uh, that, this uh, if you ordered this ash can, it gave you a little more information. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'm getting little clap emojis. I appreciate you. Um, and uh, here we go. Needs more diversity, they say. Cyberfrog 1998, The Diary of Heather Swain. Created, written, and illustrated by me, Ethan Van Skyver. Colors by Kyle Ritter. Lettered by Somni. And again, this book has the same dedication. Uh, dedicated to Andrea, Hunter, Kaylee, and Ava. That's my family. And to each and every fan who helps Cyberfrog to wake up again. All right. 1986. Think about this. This was 10 years before Cyberfrog and Chelsea landed on Earth. Um, they must have been planning to invade us for decades. They needed to taste us, or test us, taste us, make sure we were ripe for harvest, 
And even then, a little guy running from this guy here. Help! God, this is sick. Help! What is it you want? The frequency. What is it? Ah! And he starts beating the living F out of this dude. What's the frequency, Kenneth? What, Kenneth? What is the frequency? Uh, they wanted us to invite them in. They wanted our consent. They wanted our consent. So they filled the air with white noise, the right sound at the right frequency, a whispery, humming static that all of us heard, but few understood. Uh, here's a guy, here's Sonny Bono, learning how to ski. Boom! Uh, that's how the year began, the last year printed on a calendar that I ever saw. Um, no, it's not an REM reference, Central Scrutinizer. It's an actual event. <laughs> uh, only a few weeks later, we answered them. On the biggest stage, broadcast out to tens of millions of viewers, we unconsciously returned the frequency as we understood it. And although no one realized what was happening, we laughed, we gossiped. And what we thought was a silly postmodern kabuki dance actually granted consent to the destruction of the human race. Here he is. Here's Soy Bomb. Maybe we thought we had it coming. Maybe we didn't believe it was even possible. Maybe some of us wanted to find out what it was to feel something again. We'd grown bored, complacent, spoiled. Our greatest heroes were memorialized in our past, and our worst villains had become black and white relics that we told ourselves we needed to remember lest we find ourselves reflected uh, in ourselves, find them reflected in ourselves. Self-reflection was impossible. MTV, sneaker ads, and junk food. Oprah Winfrey's bromides placating the dumbest and cruelest. What were we even for? Why were we here? When the Vespas came, they showed us the value that still re remained in us. We were food for them. Livestock. Human livestock. Our flesh was dried, stretched, and used to build hives. My friends were supposed to stop them. So what do I recall on the last day that I wasn't afraid? On the last year I saw a calendar. On the last day that I saw my best friends. I remember it was a completely normal day. Around 11 a.m. I went to work at Chicken Fry and burned my wrist on the hot fryer. I was working more summer hours than anyone else because I was saving for a car. A car meant no more bus schedules. A car meant I could finally tell my mom and Eric to go to hell. Of course, uh, now they're both dead. Almost everyone is. Then there was Froggy and Sal. Okay, so I remember this. Did do Ron Ron. But because I'm clever, I called him Salamandroid, or Sal for short. Oh man, I wish you'd seen him. He looked like a beautiful blue dragon. But he was nice, you know, like a puppy dog. Big sweetheart. Unless you messed with his brother. Anyhow, Sal told me he had a meetup with Shock Roach. Shock Roach! A member of Rush Hour, the super-powered organized crime syndicate. Yeah, back then, Philadelphia was infested with these weirdo insect-human hybrids and clones that were always up to no good. Seems quaint now. Yes, you magnificent animal. Come closer. That's close enough. Heal. You want to know about the bomb? Roll over. Beg. Do a trick for me. Sal got tipped off to Pollinate and Rumblebee. We're going to drive a bomb across the Walt Whitman Bridge that evening to be delivered to Scorpione, boss over most of Philly. Why? And Salamandroid just uh, punishes Shockroach with purple fire here. I don't know, but that's why, what he told Froggy when they both met up at the house later. Cyberfrog, don't you do it! At that moment, Trick Ron, or Cyberfrog, was busy downtown with this wacko. Ah! No, you sick bastard! Uh, so Traumadeus was some kind of Frankenstein monster street musician made of organ parts instead of organs and parts. He could create digital piano keys out of thin air. And he played music that hurt people. I met him once. He smelled horrible, but he sounded worse. I always felt like the cops should handle nuisances like this, but I guess nobody in the public sector was paid enough to deal with the chattering zombie performing Barbie, uh, Barbie Girl loud enough to split your skull. And I think that's partially why this happened. We weren't motivated anymore, not even to defend ourselves from extinction. Froggy and Sal left to deal with the bomb. That is all I can do. Cut the live feed. 
what is going on? Heather goes to the window and looks outside, slurps her soda, and then, whoa, big gigantic tentacle comes by her window. I used to like to brag that I wasn't afraid of anything. What the? F this is where that stopped. The noise was unbearable at first. However, in a moment, I could only hear the beating of my heart. There's the chicken fry bucket right there from earlier. And Chell Sin's heart, Cyberfrog's mother, her heart right here. Cyberfrog had just moaned at me for only using it as the power source to watch CNN all day. He promised to come back for me. He stuck a tracker on me. I never saw him again. Chelson's heart spoke, and I heard it, and it sounded like my own mother singing to me when I was underwater when she washed my hair as a child, and I knew she wanted me to run away. So I did. And then uh, blows away the Vespas. The heart can do that. The heart actually uh, lift this Vespas up. Uh, just my heartbeat. Only silence as I watch the human race surrender to destruction. Though for the life of me, I can't recall. I must have screamed. Uh, still, I know I never gave up on my life. Never again. Stop. Wait. Wait for me. Go, go. What is this? You mean you don't know? It's the end of the world. It was bound to happen eventually. We drove for 15 minutes that seemed like hours. The conversation got strange. I hadn't realized. Is this how you do? Is this what? Intermuscular between the, the exits. So sweet. It. They'd already gotten him. The poor cop began speaking gibberish, which is what happens as your insides are slowly broken down, liquefied, becoming their honey to feed their larva. We crashed hard. I don't remember feeling that either, but I do remember the wet leaves and pine needles hitting my face and arms as we fled into the trees, as I fled into the trees. And here's Heather hiding, and you can see there's a Vespus caught in the trees, trying to buzz around, trying to use its wings, but it can't. Hey, stay put. I got this one. You can come out now, miss. Uh, these things don't do so well here. The trees are too close together for them to fly. I'm Colin. By the way, this is somebody who bought a survivor perk. Uh, that's Colin. Uh, if you'd like, uh, you can follow me to safety. I've got a place. Okay. Finally, someone who wasn't giving up. A survivor. Uh, so we wear red. Uh, these things uh, look like wasps, and, and that's the color wasps can't see. So we're invisible to them. Really? Cooper, this is Colin. Come in, son. Cooper, this is Colin. Come in, son. I'm right in front of you. Can't you see me? Of course I can see you. Over and out. Cooper, this is Heather Swain. She's staying with us. Hey, Cooper. Here's another person. Here's another survivor. This guy bought the survivor perk for his son. He's in the book. Hey, Heather. My dad needs glasses, especially at night. But he won't wear them. Colin was a survivalist. He believed nuclear war was inevitable and that New Jersey was a prime target. Uh, so we built a bus 20 feet underground in 1986. Your turn. And then there she goes, climbing down the ladder into the bus. You'll be safe here until it's all over. Matt, this is Heather. Hi. And this is Matt. Matt's in the chat right now. Hey, Matt. Uh, no. And she sees Ben Riley. You okay, Heather? He'll find me. It's going to be okay. I'm keeping this diary to remind myself. I need to remember how things were. And how quickly our lives can change. I've learned to value what I have. This home, this community, and my daughter, Lily because it can be taken from me in an instant like her father was. It's been 20 years since the day the old world ended. 2018. Uh, and we've survived by following uh, the rules. Stay in the trees, stay near the smoke, wear red outdoors, and never panic. We can do it. We can live without... Mom, Cyberfrog's back! Continued in Cyberfrog Wrecked Planet, coming soon. Uh, and indeed it is. Uh, Cyberfrog Wrecked Planet is coming soon. Uh, the campaign is up there right now, as you can see, uh, and it's doing great business. 
Uh, thank you guys for supporting it and Cyberfrog Blood Honey. Links in the description if you want to follow up and see uh, exactly what happens from here. Uh, make sure that you back Cyberfrog Rack Planet. Uh, and um, thank you guys. I definitely appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed uh, story time. Uh, now I'm just going to look and see what you guys have to say. We'll just turn this into a little uh, Q&A. Um, okay. All right. Let me see here. Where is the chat? Uh, hey. Um, that chad looks like Matt Bomer, uh, says Nin No Lose. No, that's not him. It's a different Matt. Uh, if he wants to make himself known, I'm sure that he will. Uh, like that reading a lot, says Alec Munoz. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, it's like Tolkien just read me the Hobbit. Well, isn't that nice? Um, yeah, it was fun, Ethan, says your dog's noose. Thank you, thank you. Um, let's see, well done. What is this? The Asia Research Directorate says, where's my book, Ethan? Um, do I owe you a book? Uh, if that's true, uh, let me know, and uh, we'll, we'll get it out to you immediately. Um, let's see, aren't you afraid of the copyright gods? No, I'm probably not going to copyright struck myself, uh, strike myself. Uh, Fuck Off says, sneak peek of the third Rack Planet cover. I haven't even started it yet. I'm going to start it soon. i got to finish the Salamandroid uh, wraparound cover, and then I'll, I'll do the third Rack Planet cover. I'll pro probably have it done in a week. Uh, well Red User says, reveal yourself. Um, nah. <laughs> I'm here. You guys see me all the time. Hey, Billy Tucci's here. He says, well done. Thanks, Billy Tucci. Uh, Mike Wilson Art says, Kyle Ritter's colors are fantastic. Yeah, and I can't, uh, you know, uh, you can't even say that enough. Kyle Ritter is a fantastic colorist and does so much for Cyberfrog. I'm, I'm grateful to uh, have him on board. I uh, try to take care of him as best as I can, make sure he gets paid a lot and on time. Uh, Turtles and Cyberfrog 3 and 4, says Jason. Yeah, thinking about it, um, or in one of those, you know, in one of those. Uh, Aquarium says, any thoughts on a novelization? Uh, I haven't even considered that. You know, we'll see. Uh, I want to get the first four books done because the first four books close out a story. Um, and then, you know, it, the story, there's still a cliffhanger at the end of the fourth book, but uh, really I think that you could do a book. You know, uh, or or a movie or something like that, based on the first four issues of uh, Cyberfrog that are going to come out. Um, thank you for that. Uh, Inkstain says one more story. Well, I, I don't have any more stories. That's all I have right now. You know, I mean, at the moment we are stuck with uh, just these two books. But you know, look, I'm working on it, and uh, I hope you guys will come along uh, and uh, support Rack Planet. Uh, Valiant is your future competition, EVS. Probably not. Probably not, Valiant. Uh, Kieran Jones says, Kyle is awesome. Love talking to him on Twitter. Can't wait for Starblades. Barb Rogers Gun Girl says, I love this. Comic Artist Pro Secrets. Oh, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Street Sharks crossover would be fun. Um, Gus Tyler Bush says, Do you think you would survive the Vespus invasion? Uh, well, not if they got into my basement. We'll see. I think the answer about surviving, if you'll survive the Vespus invasion, is if you get sick or not with this, uh, uh, with this new uh, flu, the Wu flu. I guess would be kind of a nice practice. Stay indoors. You know, follow the rules, and maybe you won't get sick. Uh, I think I would probably uh, succumb to the Vespus. Uh, I don't know what I would do. You know, I'm not. I'm not really a, a prepper or a survivalist, uh, but you never know. Uh, Mr. Wonderful says, I really want those Cyberfrog and Sal figures now. Thanks. Yeah, um, we're going to launch them in May, I believe. I, You know, everything is still going according to plan here. Uh, you know, the uh, the uh, flu hasn't really slowed us down. Um, so, you know, that's good. Uh, <laughs> that's racist, D. It's called the Kung Flu. That's very clever. I've never heard that. Um, well done. Reminds me of classic radio, says Lackham Amir. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, did you buy three weeks worth of pie? Kind of. I bought uh, I bought two eight packs of of a little miniature apple pies, and I've already eaten one of the whole eight. I, no, it's two four packs of little mini apple pies. Eight pies in total. I already ate four of them. You know, crazy. Um, I'll smoke cigar. I'll smoke cigars and wear red. That'd probably do it. Uh, let's see. Junkyard Dunn says amphibian. Uh, Amphibionics was fun. Tim seeley -ish. I know Tim was, is a fan. Yeah, Tim Seeley wrote a five-page Cyberfrog story that I've got. 
You know, I don't know if it's really appropriate now. Like Tim Seeley did a version of what Cyberfrog would be like in the future with Heather, and it it kind of followed the uh, it kind of followed the old sort of relationship they had. But Cyberfrog used to be kind of like he would he would kind of be mean to Heather in the old book. He'd be like, I don't I don't want to have to put up with you, uh, that kind of a thing. And I I don't you know I'm, I'm glad I kind of changed that. I think their relationship, them being great friends, is really important. And uh, Dale Stafford says, these book readings are a special and appreciated EVS. Uh, thanks very much. Um, let's see. EVS spies pie by the pack. Yeah, I do. Yeah, Amphibionics was okay. I, I read it again. I thought it was kind of... Uh, it's funny. My books are kind of just... My old 90s books can be kind of uh, like gory <laughs> and over the top. But, you know, it's all right. Uh, Ryan Miller says, this is the voice of classic comic artist Pro Secrets. Soft, smooth, and sexy. Wow. Well, thank you, Ryan Miller. Um, uh, let's see. Why do you friend zone Cyberfrog, says Johnny Skinwalker. Cyberfrog doesn't have ambitions uh, towards love. <laughs> he doesn't want to reproduce. I don't know. I, I, he, he's here for a purpose. You know, he's got a singular purpose. That's one of the reasons why I like him. Uh, you know, it's like he, he knows what he's here to do. And that's what he's here to do. And when he strayed from his purpose, uh, he got distracted and everything went wrong. Uh, Blue Spectre says, will you ever go back and explore Cyberfrogs two years prior to the invasion? Um, yeah, I'm talking to Andrew Huerta about drawing uh, Amphibionics number three, uh, which would take place, you know, in 1997. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a matter of sitting down and writing it and finding out where it needs to be. I, I don't think I should do it for this campaign because this campaign's already pretty overstuffed. Um, but uh, at some point, Andrew Huerta is going to draw Amphibionics number three. And that's going to be like the Philly uh, insect gang. It's going to be Rumblebee, Dementipede, Earwig, uh, Shockroach, you know, all of those guys. So it'll be kind of fun. Um... Yeah, let's see. Uh, Astonishing motherfucker says, My years of being uh, gangbanging Piru has built me for success against the Vespas. Yeah, probably. You know, I think the, the thing about it is, is that, um, uh, you know, Heather feels like when these things happen, when ca catastrophes happen, too many people uh, just kind of allow it to happen to them. And you're watching this now. I mean, you know, the uh, co I mean, this whole story couldn't be more timely. The comic book industry uh, is going to hit the skids. You know, it's like a lot of people are going to be out of work and out of business. And you know, you're going to see some people are just going to sort of fall over. Other people are going to stand up and fight. So I think that in the sense of uh, of that, like, I would survive the Vespas because I stand up and fight. I've got a plan. I'm prepared to survive you know, the death of the comic book industry, which is kind of, I guess, meta, you know, it would be kind of, an, uh, you know, analogous to the end of the world. Um, stand up and fight, have a plan, and prepare yourself. Don't just uh, give up. And that's what bothers Heather. She just watches people um, just go, holy shit, giant alien wasps. Uh, better just uh, let them eat me. <laughs> it's like, you know, you're not really trying to fight. You're not surviving. You're not using your brains or your wits in this situation. Star Wars Radio, thanks for uh, four ninety nine. I appreciate that. It says, uh, is it Chicken Fry or Chicken Shack? You use both in your comics. Yeah, I know. I I, I realized that. There's a she calls it Chicken Shack uh, at one point, and then it kind of became Chicken Fry. And I guess I never noticed it. And I guess I didn't notice that mistake. And I don't know why I did that. I feel like maybe the reason why I did that was because it was probably called Chicken Shack in Amphibionics. I mean, because Heather is working at her chicken joint uh, in Amphibionics, and I can't remember. I called it one of one of the two, and I, I might have gotten confused there. But it's officially called Chicken Fry. So if I could go back and change it, I would, I would make sure that it's Chicken Fry. Um. Yeah. A person is smart, but people are dumb, panic animals, and you know it, says a berserker. As a quote, yeah. Chicken fry is better, Vanessa L. I agree with you. Um, uh, Dabrio de Bru I can't pronounce your name, says, you should write Tales from Perdani, something like Superman's Krypton. 
Well, I, I got to save it uh, because, you know, we will we will see Pirdani and we will meet the Phoebe people. We will see uh, what sins are like, you know, uh, Chelsin's species. You're, you're going to see all that stuff. But once you see it, if I show it to you now, you're going to understand how to beat the Vespas. <laughs> because Pirdani, their whole thing is we did beat the Vespas. So, um, you know, that's why we're sending other people out there. We're sending our people out there to, to stop them from invading other worlds. So it's later on, and it might not even be until season two that I actually give you a glimpse of uh, of that world. It probably would be season two. So you know, I, I plan on doing Cyberfrog for a long, long time. Um, I don't know. I just have a big, big story to tell. Uh, so I'm I'm excited about that. Uh, we got the uh, Rumblebee cards underway, by the way. Uh, so those are, I think those are going to print pretty soon. Uh, I let me see if I can find it here. Um, yeah, I love making trading cards. I, I like just making things. Uh, that's what's so great about this job. It's it's not like I'm just turning in artwork and uh, they're uh, you know other people are making this stuff for me. I uh, I get to actually make uh, make things, uh, which is cool. I guess I didn't tweet it out yet. I'm going to have to tweet it out. I'll, I'll tweet it out the uh, front and back of the uh, Rumblebee card, which isn't quite perfect. There are a couple of things I want to fix on it, but you'll get a general sense of uh, what it's going to look like. Um, all right, I'm going to get back to work. Dan Fraga said, can we go live? You want to come on my show? And I said, no, I'm just going to draw. And then I just thought, I really want to tell, I want to do story time. And, and you know, right now, it uh, just seems like a really pleasant time to sit down and tell the uh, story of uh, Cyberfrog Blood Honey. Uh, no, the planet is not a giant can of raid. <laughs> it's more, uh, I think it's more interesting than that. Uh, Chris Mason says, EVS, have you at any time ever eaten an amphibian leg of any kind? No, I don't think they're edible. I find that gross. I, frogs frogs are friends. They're not food, they're friends. Uh, and I think that's why, you know, watching them hurt, uh, watching them in pain, you know, being rendered into food bothers me. I don't see them as food. They're, they shouldn't be edible. They shouldn't be edible, you know, by humans. Uh, they should kind of just be our pals. Um, everything is food, says Jason Ziegler. Uh, no, <laughs> that's how we got where we are today. Uh, everything is not food, definitely not, um, not to humans. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, oh, super chats. Did I miss any? Hold on a second here. I don't want to do that. I try. I try to read all the super chats, and and thank you guys for sending them. I was completely focused on my book, uh, reading my book, and I didn't really pay attention. But I, I think there are a couple of super chats to get to, so uh, I'll do that right now. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Super chats opening a new window. Uh, Arson Arison seventy four says thanks, Ethan. Uh, you're welcome. Roscoe P Coltrane says if Unforgettable Tales and Amphibionics are reprints of the old stuff. How much of the old stuff are we still missing? Warts and all or still more? So warts and all is going to have everything in it. Okay. And, and, you know, there are maybe 15, I think there are 15 issues of Cyberfrog total from the nineties. Uh, but, um, and, and there are various like variant covers and reprints and things like that. But I think there are 15 stories total. Uh, I'm going to reprint all of them in warts and all. And then I'm also going to reprint um, them as trade paperbacks with new covers. So, you know, just like we did with Unforgettable Tales, I'm going to go ahead and take Cyberfrog 1 through 4, which is one complete story from Harris Comics, and I'm going to make that into a trade paperback eventually. I'm going to take Reservoir Frogs 1 and 2 and Cyberfrog 0, and I'm going to make that a trade paperback. Uh, and, um, you know, and I think that covers it pretty much. Let me think of what else there is. There's Amphibionics, but those are, we, we colored those and, and reprinted them as ash cans. And then, you know, like I said, Warts and All will cover the in, entire, you'll, you won't miss a thing if you read Warts and All. Uh, Yetna P says, please ask JPB to hire a CG artist for his book. Who? Uh, all right, I will. Uh, just a kid from Brooklyn says, Ethan, during the flu, it's like FDR during World War II. Uh, that's nice. Uh, Blue Samurai Zero says, dang, 52 minutes late. Got to rewind the whole thing. Well, uh, it's going to be up on my channel. So if you want to, if you want to watch it again, um, you know, absolutely feel free. Uh, and, uh, thanks guys. I really, really appreciate your being here tonight. Thanks for your support. Make sure to go back Cyberfrog Unforgettable Tales and do not miss out on Cyberfrog Wrecked Planet. 
Oh, and Salamandroid Death's Sting. Do not miss Salamandroid Death's Sting. That's a big one. Uh, okay, everyone. Thanks, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.